Okay, good evening everyone. How are you? Um I'm fine. Okay, good to hear. I'm good, Pastor. All right, all right, all right. I'm good. Be safe. Okay. Okay. Thanks again for coming tonight on time also. So let's pray and begin. Ronisha, can you pray for us today? Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. Protect us during this evening and make us at least learn a, a few things and capture them and protect Pastor Jude for spending at least two hours of his time teaching us the Word of God. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, level 1, level 2, of the doctrine of baptism, <laughs> level three of laying on of hands and we've been on level three for so long now and because level four will be of the resurrection of the dead level five eternal judgment and after level five now we go on to greater things that people only try to imagine. So this, verse 3, we will do if God permits. And I know God has been permitting this. Okay? So let's go. This is our sixth session, post-baptism session. And uh, it has to do still with the laying on of hands. You see, the title is always there, guys. <laughs> you can't miss it, right? But tonight, I'm going to talk about the Christian benefit. Remember what we left off talking about? It was Jesus ministering to people and teaching Peter, James, and John how to minister to people, the laying on of hands, etc. But look, in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus was practicing it in front of everybody. Okay? And uh, in many other passages, Jesus even entered the place and he had the power to heal the people, the Bible says, but because they did not believe, he could do nothing there except that he laid hands on a few children and blessed them. And then he departed. So even mighty Jesus cannot do much if people don't believe. Whereas, if people believe, he could say a word. The person will be healed, made whole, whatever. Or if the person believes, he could lay hands on the person and the person will recover. Or it could be done in reverse. The person will lay his or her hand on Jesus and will be made whole. We saw all that, right? But now in Matthew 19, verses 14 to 15, but Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid hands on them and then departed from there. What do you think laying on of hand right there did for those children? What was that all about? What was Jesus doing? What is another word to say what Jesus did right there? Anyone? Uh, he was blessing them. That's it. That's the word. You see? So when you lay hands on someone, that's another word or another gesture for blessing the person. So now, if you remember all that we studied before, whether it was Jacob laying hands on the Pharaoh, 
laying hands on the children of Joseph, laying hands on who else, you know? And then Moses laying hands on Joshua, etc. It was to impart a blessing. All right? So now, let's listen to this thing and you'll see how powerful this doctrine is, okay? It's a doctrine. Doctrine is a teaching. That's all it is. Doctrine doesn't mean, oh, you're a Baptist, you're, you're, you're... No, no. Doctrine is another word for teaching. Don't forget that. Okay, guys? So, Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 19. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, in other words, they were converted, right? They sent Peter and John. You see who they sent? Uh, who, when they had come down to Samaria, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Ooh, amazing. What? Let me go back. Who had come down just to pray for the people at Samaria or of Samaria. Why? So that they may receive the Holy Spirit. Wait up. They heard the word of God. They were converted, right? You will even find out later that they were even baptized in water. Yet, they did not receive the Holy Spirit. Don't take my word for it. I'm going to continue reading. You guys, please use your psyche. You went to school for that. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let, let's go back to verse 15 and I'll read through verse 16. Who? Peter and John. When they had come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit spirit isn't that wonderful let's continue okay and when simon simon is a sorcerer that was in the church yeah i mean he was at samaria doing a bunch of things and even calling himself the great power of god because he used to do magic and fool the people and they were taken into these things and they used to call him barbecue you know or whatever big voodoo priest or huga and they thought that the man was powerful but now philip went into there okay he preached the gospel of jesus christ and the people were like whoa we have to believe in this thing because philip a deacon, a simple deacon, okay? Prayed for the people and healed many sick people. He ministered to them. He even baptized them. You saw that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But now they needed more, so they sent for Peter and John. Now they knew about the laying on of hands. I'm telling you to get ready. And now listen, this Hugo, this Boko, this Simon, the magician, whatever he was, he saw that, oh, through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money. Oh, 
Give me this power also, so that anyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh. Now you have to go and read through this thing to see what Peter gave him as a response. You fool, get lost. I mean, go to, I mean, <clears throat> with your money because you think you can buy the power of the Holy Spirit with money. Oh, may you perish with your money. Now, let's not talk about this part of the story because it's another theme altogether. Let's go back to Simon seeing. Now, I want you to understand that Simon did not just see uh, they prayed for people and then that's it, right? Simon must have seen some gestures, right? Some things happening when they laid hands on the people, right? You will find out what he might have seen, right? But suffice it to say that he saw them do that and he says, oh, I want that power also. Wow. In other words, a man that used to fool people with great things that he is doing with his hand, the magic, now he wants to have that power also? You think it was something just like that that he saw? He saw Pastor Jude going around and giving a handshake to somebody? No, 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 no. And then he wants Pastor Jude's power to give handshakes? <laughs> no, there was more that happened in his face or to his eyes. Okay? <laughs> what was it? Let's continue. I will not even go into so many other things because we'll come back to that theme later, okay? But now, there is somebody else that benefited from the laying on of hands, the Apostle Paul. And who did the Lord Jesus send to minister to the Apostle Paul? Well, you think that the Holy Spirit will send the bishop of all shops? No. No, guys. That's why I told you, you guys would better get going, get ready. Because, take a look, in Acts chapter 9, starting with, with verse 10 to 18. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. <laughs> you see, guys, you think that for the great apostle Paul, you're going to send Bishop of Turin or whatever? No. A simple disciple, but a disciple that ha has been listening to the studies and retaining. Okay? what he was taught so he was ready so jesus know knew it and says ananias and he says here i am lord well <laughs> you know what else he was in a vision and he knew that it was the lord speaking to him well how can you know that the lord is speaking to you if you never spoke to him Hmm? That's why I said you need to recharge, you need to be in prayer, you need to be in the Word to know when God speaks and so that you can know what to respond and what to speak also, right? Many people don't even read their Bibles and they're praying. It doesn't work. That's not the way it is supposed to be. You need to be in the word so then when you open your mouth to pray, you know what to pray. Even then, the Bible says, you don't know exactly what you should pray for. You don't know how to pray. But 
God helps us in our infirmities, the Holy Spirit does it through us by way of groanings that you cannot utter or that, that don't make sense. What is that? We'll get to that study too. But so far, let's be on the laying on of hands. So he understood it was the Lord. He says, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, okay, arise and go to the street called straight. You see, not gay. <laughs> just uh, just uh, a pun, okay? You know why it, it, it was called straight? Because God was straightening a person, okay? So that's the real meaning now, okay? The, 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 the is straight because God is straightforwardly sending a simple disciple to go and minister to a guy who thought he knew so much he was a big deal. And inquire at the house of Judas for a guy called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, the sign that he's been chosen and that he's getting ready is that he's praying. You see, guys, you can't miss it. <laughs> you see? So if you're being prepared by the Lord and you never knew or you never care about prayer or praying, except when you go online and they say, oh, well, you're going to pray. And uh, Lord, uh, you know, we love you. And uh, well, uh, do your thing as you want. You know, I'm not going to be in your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. That's not all, people. That's not all. I'm trying to stir you up, guys. Okay, it's not all. For behold, he is praying. The chosen of God knows to pray. Prepare your heart. And in a vision, this guy called Saul has seen you. Do you see what's happening? The guy is not even baptized yet. He's not even fully converted. I mean, he's converted, but he's not fully into the Lord's school yet, as it were. Yet, he's having visions. And he has a clear vision that a guy named Ananias is coming to you. God doesn't give riddles at this point, okay? God gives you something straight to deal with. A guy named Ananias is going to come to you. And you, Ananias, you're going to go to this place and you'll find a guy named Saul of Tarsus. To the point that God says, here's what I want you to minister to him and say to him and do with him or do for him. Okay, listen to the, the, the story because it's from the Bible, right? So go, he has seen in a vision that you are coming. You're going to put your hand on him. What is that? The laying on of hands, right, good people? You're going to lay hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Wow. Did I tell you last week that this thing about the laying on of hands is amazing, right? Okay, let's continue. Then Ananias answered, Lord, what? You're sending me to this guy? I heard what he's doing. I heard many things about this man. How much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And you're sending me to him? And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name, Lord. I know. But the Lord said to him, Yeah, I know. Go because he is a chosen vessel of mine who is going to bear my name 
before Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Well, if you were Ananias, would you have gone? And when you go, what will you have to do, right? Because Saul is there all by himself. And the Lord says, Christel, go, I mean, Ananias, you know, <laughs> go and lay hands on this guy named Paul, etc. When you get there, you'd better obey. You'd better be ready. You'd better be fully charged. Otherwise, you will lose all your charge when you appear before Paul, the, the old criminal, right? Well, what did Ananias do? Verse 17, Ananias went his way and entered the house, obedience. And laying his hands on Paul, he said, Brother Saul, Ay, ay, ay. Do you see what's happening, people? He called him brother. In other words, Paul was converted, right? Not only that, what did he do? Yeah. Okay, now suppose he had gone in there and he said, uh, uh, let me give you a handshake. Well, let me bump, you know, etc. because COVID is there. What do you think would happen? Yeah, COVID is trying to take away some of our doctrines, but it can't, okay? So the Lord says to lay hands on the sick. At this stage, you cannot be afraid of a sick person because the Lord said to lay hands on the person. And somebody may say, oh, no, COVID is too big to, for us to do that. Well, guess what? COVID, COVID is not necessarily transferred through the laying on of hands because you can wash your hands afterwards, but it can truly be transferred through the uh, smelling of the nose or something, right? <laughs> So we have to be careful to be obedient to the Lord's commands and not to relent because of some foolish things that happens to the world or in the world, okay? We guys have to listen to the Lord because Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, how did you know, you see? When you have contact with the Lord, you know things. Anyway, let me go. He has sent me so that you can receive your sight. Uh, 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 uh. You see why he had put his hand on him? So that he could re recover his sight. Because at this stage, the apostle Paul, well, the soul of Tarsus, was blind he was blinded by the light of the lord because the lord was angry at him for being so harsh with his people anyway let's continue and you'll see for yourself okay uh, who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me to you that you may receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit verse 18 immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once <laughs> and he arose and was baptized wait a minute you see it's not the same experience, right? So far, because we've been seeing it and not talk about it. You see, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not the baptism in water. It never was. Jesus was baptized in water 
by the hand of John the Baptist, right? And after that, heavens opened, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came on him, right? It was two experiences, right? Also, the disciples of Jesus were baptized and they had to wait for the day of Pentecost so that they should be or would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Go back and check. Don't believe me. Now, the people in Acts chapter 8 of Samaria, they were baptized in water but Peter and John had to go to them pray for them lay hands on them so that they would receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit Paul also I've come Paul says Ananias so that you can receive the Holy Spirit and now after he was he received he was prayed for he was also baptized in water okay the laying on of hands continue people it's not just for baptism purposes or for healing the sick but it is also for other benefits Commissioning, for instance, is one of them. Okay? Acknowledging is another one. So let's look at this part. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was also called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord. Okay, now you see they are not ministering to people. What does it mean to minister to the Lord? Well, guys, you see, earlier I said, oh, so what if I send one of you to go minister to someone who needs prayer, who needs the laying on of hands, who needs a teaching, a word of faith, uh, some encouragement, etc. You are ministering to a person, right? But you can also minister to the Lord. What does that mean? If you pray to God, if you fast, that's ministering to the Lord because it's between you and him, okay? So whatever you do, even obeying your parents, the Bible says, do it as to the Lord, okay? Is And not as to men, okay? So you get it? So they were ministering to the Lord. Now the Holy Spirit says, now how do you think the Holy Spirit said what was said there? Like they heard some voice from the, the roof or, or the wall saying, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. You think that's how it happened? No, that's not how it happened. You know, it happened through a person that was speaking who was full of the Spirit, who says, Oh, the Holy Spirit says, Now separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I've called them, says the Lord, right? Then they continued fasting until they finished their period of fasting. Well, let's say for instance, they decided to make it a three day fast. They waited until the three days were over. And then what did they do? It's all in green. They laid hands on Barnabas and Saul. And who sent them away? They. The people that were praying, right? Let, let's see who they were again. The teachers 
the prophets that were in Antioch. And the names are given, right? You see, you can't go wrong. <laughs> so now those people laid hands on Barnabas and Saul. Listen to the language now. That's why the Bible is so sweet. It says, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go back. Who prayed for them? Verse 3, it was the people that were fasting that prayed for them. But who sent them? Now, being sent out by the Holy Spirit. Oh, you see? So, people, people who have their hands sanctified, holy, and ready to do the work of ministry. When those hands touch something, it is basically the hands of God, the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, the hands of the Holy Spirit. You, do you see how fat it gets? It's beautiful, isn't it? So that you are the hand that God needs to heal the sick, to, do, to minister to our brother man. Okay, let's continue. They went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus, and when they had arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. John? Yeah. John Mark as their assistant. He is the one who wrote the book of Mark. Okay? All right, let's go. Now, to put an end to what you can see that thing do, I've chosen to read Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7 with you guys. It happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Ephesus? Okay, when you read the book of Ephesians, you will know when Paul met the Ephesians, right? So in the book of Acts. So it's Acts, and then Romans, Corinthians, etc. And then you find Ephesians, where Paul would write them a letter. But the letter stems from this encounter, okay? So Paul came to Ephesus, to the Ephesians, right? And he found some disciples there because they were like dead church disciples. He said to them, did you guys receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? <laughs> Paul, you're going to be in trouble for this. Let's listen to them. So they said to him, hmm, what is this thing about the Holy Spirit? We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Did they call themselves disciples? Yeah, disciples of what? Who taught you guys? And then for you to say, oh, we have not so much as heard whether <laughs> well at least they are not like our Haitian brothers who would have answered yeah 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 I'm filled with with the Holy Spirit I'm I I've the unction oh, I've the unction I am anointed you know huh Ooh, uh, yeah. no that's not the way things are if you answer truthfully you will receive help. But if you think you know it all, you have it all, you will not get help. Okay? So now listen to them. We did not know about this thing, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's in the Bible, guys. You know, verse 3. And he said to them, Then you were baptized wrong. What baptism did you receive? They said, We 
got baptized in the name of John, into John's baptism, right? <laughs> Paul says, ah, oh, guys, yeah. When, you see, when John was baptizing, he baptized the people with a baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on the one who is coming after him. Didn't John say that? Yes, he did. That is Christ Jesus. <laughs> okay, let's continue. I'm not going to comment because this is trouble right there. Verse 5, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And how do I know it, it happened? And they spoke with tongues and prophesied, says the Bible. What? Let me read that again. I'm not going to comment. You can try me. I'm not going to say more. When they heard this, they obeyed. They said, okay, so then let's receive the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul baptized them. And after he had baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is that what the text says? Now, he laid hands on them. Do you agree? And the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now, it was about 12 of them in all. Okay, so... I'll stay here for today. Did you guys learn something new or troubling or something valuable that you're going to double check? Because that's the way Christians should do it. When somebody teaches you something, you can receive it and say, oh, I'm going to check that out. Well, that's why my teaching stemmed from the, the Older Testament to show you how people ministered with this thing. I did not start with the New Testament because the New Testament explains what the benefits were, but it started way back. All right? Anyone has a question or issues? No. Okay, let me ask a different question. Did you guys understand this teaching today yes remember mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 16 he says these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will speak in tongues in my name they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover in my name, they will kick out demons <laughs> out of people's psyche or life. In my name, they will even raise the dead. But who can do that? Any one of us can do it. Don't be surprised if the spirit of faith should come on the littlest person among us and then that person she or he would go where somebody just dropped dead and the spirit of faith come upon you that we will talk about also that the holy spirit can just give you some faith to raise the dead immediately on the spot etc that doesn't mean that that faith is going to stay with you forever no that's like a, a gift that you're given at the moment for this cause. And you just go and you say, let's say the person is called Brother Don Don, right? 
Brother Dodo, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. Don't be ready to run <laughs> because you just ask Brother Dodo to rise up, right? <laughs> if he opens his eyes and says, Where am I? I'll tell you. Some people from the church were like, ah, I get out. <laughs> oh, I don't want a zombie to run up. No, but you who ministered, you will have such faith that you you will stay there and and do much more but let me ask you this after brother don don open his eyes what should you do lay your hands on him uh almost but it has to do with hands but not lay at this stage we saw it last week you go somewhere and you are ministering to a dead person or a sick person now you utter the word of faith and the person now sits down what is your next help him, man. Help, him. help him up that's it what? you see guys okay now <laughs> let me let me tell you what could happen okay you just utter the word of faith and you say you get up and the person sits up and you don't do the next thing and the person will say well where i was i was better off and goes back <laughs> you you'll be like oh and guess what that might have been your only moment to fully minister to somebody but because you did not do that thing give him a hand to get up the person may, may say oh i'm out <laughs> and this time you cannot recover that sick person or that dead person okay you see how serious it gets it's like those nurses who are defibrillating a patient the power <laughs> and finally the person you can start feeling some pulse etc and you're like okay he, he'll be all right no <laughs> you need to inject this foolishness called the iv etc and now there is so much more to do you have to lay your hands on the sick person at this stage and do more okay you guys need to go and watch uh, something about reviving a person you'll see that it's not just you pull the person comes back and you're like okay you're okay or you go uh, minister cpr right <laughs> and finally the person is just uh, and you say okay uh, yo you, you'll be all right <laughs> no you're gonna lose that person okay and the second time around you may not get that breath back okay so the same way it is for what we are learning please learn it right so that you don't have to think twice like oh why did god do this to me now this is embarrassing no god did not do it to you because god wanted to do something through you but you were not fully trained or you did not fully get to where he wanted you to get because you were not listening critically. So, too bad. All right. Okay, let's uh, finish for tonight. So, I hope that you guys see that all I'm teaching you is fully in the Bible and black on white but although it's like this i still want you to go back and verify the teaching verify me to see if i'm telling the truth at all times all right i can point you to where it is all written the bible guys the bible okay make it your your book Okay, your reference. Let's pray. 
Lord, I thank you for these children that you are preparing. If you ask me, I would say that we are not there yet. But I know that uh, sometimes we have Peters in our midst. We have Johns. We have great Apostle Pauls, etc. But we don't know it, but you do. And so I'm going to continue to teach them because I know that the day they get it, they will be your ministers for life and for the truth of your gospel that no one, not even the devil, will be able to test. So continue preparing them and help them to realize that they are called for a great purpose. Encourage them, Lord, I can't. Bless them, I can't. Help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It was a pleasure being with you again. So I'll see you next Thursday with the final phase of the laying on of hands. Okay?